open up a tab, grab a seat, and pour a pint. It's time for the Beer Guys Radio Show. You want free beer? Go to the brewery. Dedicated to the art, science, and enjoyment of craft beer. Yeah, what's wrong with the beer we got? Now, here are your hosts, Tim Dennis and Aaron Williams. And welcome to the Beer Guys Radio Show. BeerGuysRadio.com is our website, and we are radio for the local craft beer movement, broadcasting live from Stats Brew Pub in downtown Atlanta. And I'm Aaron Williams. And I'm Tim Dennis. we got Brian Hewitt with us as well, who gets no pretzels today. None. Oh. Brian, how are you doing other than pretzel list? I would be better if I had some pretzels. Okay, whatever. So, And coming up in today's show, like Aaron said, we are on location today. We're live at Stats Brew Pub in downtown Atlanta, and uh, they've recently become a brew pub, and we're going to talk to the new brewmaster, Austin Edwards. Definitely. Very excited about that. He joins us here in the studio with us, our live studio, which is kind of nice. This is a nice setup here they've got. It's very nice. I, yeah, I we've like got a, a fancy booth here, all kinds of lights and panels and stuff. It, and we're rocking a new studio. We have. We've it's, upgraded our gear here. Well, a little so. bit of Christmas present, early very Christmas nice. present to Merry us. Christmas so, uh, to so we us. do enjoy that. Absolutely. Exactly. So, so yes. Yeah, so um, we'll talk to brewmaster Austin Edwards and just kind of enjoy about things that uh, that we enjoy about uh, beer. It's going to be a good time. And I really screwed that up. So that's, I'm going to. We're just going to enjoy about things that we enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> that's my mantra for life. Aaron. Yes, enjoy about things we enjoy. That's perfect. That's perfect. So speaking of, um, you. You had a busy week, as per usual, Tim. So uh, yeah, what did you guys? What were you guys week. up to? Man, I did. I did the round. So we went out uh, last weekend and decided to do a little brewery marathoning. So nice. uh, we went to uh, Red Brick, which is fantastic. And y'all, if you haven't tried Red Brick recently, new brewmaster there, Gavin McKenna. Uh, yeah. You've got Garrett Lockhart. The, the team there, they, they've just really refocused their efforts, and they're putting out just phenomenal beers. We stayed there a good long time, sampled. They had twenty different beers on the board, so just had an awesome time there. We also went over to Scofflaw. Had some of their cocoa absentium. Went to Monday Night Brewing for some space lettuce. Yes. Enjoyed that quite a lot. Uh, Burnt Hickory Brewery for a Christmas party and got to take a sneak peek at New Realm there on the Beltline, who's getting uh, very close to opening. We actually said very close, close last week in Brian's new segment. And uh, should be any day now, but just... An insane facility. Uh, you really would not. The pictures don't do it justice, Aaron. It looks amazing. It so, really does. It's, it's, it's going to be really cool when that opens up. Should it's going to be a really soon. nice landmark. I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, so, so that was my week. How about you? I'm super boring. Um, so, yeah. so again, I've got some breaking news here on the Beer Guys Radio Show. I have a new job. You do? Uh, Congrats, do. Aaron. Yes, thank you. Yes. I, uh, I actually work for Monday Night Brewing now, so uh, full disclosure. And uh, I've been basically drinking a lot of Monday Night Brewing beers because, that well, that's my job. That's Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, so Space Lettuce uh, has been my, my drink of choice all week. And but that's been about you it. will still give unbiased reporting on the Beer Guys Radio <laughs> I will absolutely do that. We're here at Stats Brew Pub. Exactly. We are, man. They're showing the love the competition, everywhere. And we're showing the love for everybody. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's a great beer scene here. Um, I'm really happy to be part of it. And uh, we're going to still keep cranking on. And uh, I will just abstain from Monday Night Brew. Oh, Beer Guys Radio's done you pretty well then, haven't they? Absolutely. Man? I like the this. connections, making, uh, making I know, things I happen. It. You're next, Tim. you gotta, you got to well, go start see. getting some. I've <laughs> got a radio show, man. This is this one. Well, that's I'm true. Doing, I guess so, you're good yeah. to go. Absolutely. So, yeah. So let's go ahead and check out this week's. Truck and Taps Beers of the Week. Crack open a cold one. It's the Truck and Tap Beer of the Week. Woo-hoo! Craft beer and food trucks in downtown Woodstock. Truckandtap.com. See what do we got today? We've got Stats Beers. Yes, we do. Here. We've got a lot of them. So I'm sipping their 300 Pilsner. I've dubbed it, dubbed it Perfect Game Pilsner here. There you go. So sipping on that. We have six more to try, and we'll talk about those more in depth as we get into it. Uh, but they they kind of run the gamut here. We've got a really nice flight sampler in front of us, talking yep. about each beer a little bit. And uh, I want to get into all of them. So we'll I do, do that too. In due time. And you've also got pretzels in front of you and some pretzels. Boiled peanuts, there's some boiled some peanuts. There's some uh, popcorn, popcorn there. That I think that's Parmesan. Is that some Parmesan popcorn? It's he, actually, popcorn's not your territory, right? So no, I just yeah. yeah. He just makes beer about popcorn. It's about it's beer, craft so. popped. Exactly. Yes. There you go. So yeah, looking forward to getting into that and uh, talking a little bit more with uh, the guys from Stats here in just a bit. But first, let's go ahead and check out this week's headlines. What's in the news? The beer guys have the scoop. Me all about it. Time for headlines. So Brian, we've got some headlines today. Uh, no pretzels for you, but you've got some news. What's going on? Yes, I have news. News about pretzels. No, I don't. Oh no. So I have an update on Steady Hand. It is opening in West Midtown in early 2018 near uh, Star Provisions and Top Golf. It's going to be a 14,000 square foot space with a 3,600 square foot uh, tap room and a possible patio addition in the future. There will be a 30 barrel brew house for their core beers, a smaller pilot system for seasonals and one offs. There will be 15 to 20 taps, and uh, they're saying their beers will, quote, showcase a variety of special offerings. So those beers will include the ones you can already find on tap, like Flower Business and Paradise Weights. 
They are also working on a coffee stout and plan to always have a seasonal farmhouse beer. It's going to be a pretty cool space. There'll be live music, area for food trucks, and space for booking events. And it's good to get a brewery over there because there really wasn't anything in that area. I, it was, so. Yeah, it was a, like a desert for beer. Desert, total yeah. beer. So that, thirsty. That West Midtown, go- total beer desert. Oh, yeah, there's yeah, nothing going on in West Midtown. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> We, we, we digress. Actually, not yeah. far from your uh, No, it's not, actually. No, and, and we've got, there, so. uh, there's there's that there. We've also got uh, um, uh, Wild Heaven, which is opening up their second uh, yep. location in this area. Uh, we've got Banyan Roots, Banyan Roots which is there. a new brew pub. Mm-hmm. And uh, also uh, Bold Monk. Right. I was, Bold I, Monk's there. I always want to say Thirsty Monk, but it's Bold Monk, wall, yes. Uh, Red Brick, Second Self, yeah. Urban Tree. It's, it's, it's becoming quite the destination It'll in the West It'll be the place so. to be. Absolutely. Indeed. So we have a uh, couple of new brew pubs coming to Atlanta. Porter Pizza and Brewery is opening in the Sandy Springs area in January. Porter Q and Brewery is opening in Dunwood- Dunwoody in March. Alan Porter is the man behind it. He's a self-described real estate developer with a brewing passion. And he is also the son of Winston Porter, who is the owner of Stats. Interesting coincidence. Well, there you yeah. go. We're yes. here, and yeah, this absolutely. comes out now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so both brew pubs will offer six beers that are made in-house on their five-barrel systems, and those beers will include things like New England IPAs or Northeast IPAs. I, n- I never know which is which on that. Uh, pale ales and pilsners, and it probably goes without saying that you'll find pizza on the menu at Porter Pizza and barbecue on the menu at Porter Q. Yeah, so I talked to Alan not long ago when he first, you know, announced that these were coming, and uh, you know, he's just bringing some more beer and that. Sounds like he had some ideas for some other things, and going to start off with these, and they're going to open, from what I understand, fairly early in 2018. They'll be coming along. Yeah, I didn't have an exact date on that, but yeah, those those examples are just a few. They're they plan to have six different beers, 12 total between the two different locations, all brewed in-house, of course. Just more and more brew pubs and, and breweries opening up. I mean, this is just, uh, again, almost like the floodgates have been opened uh, in, in Metro Atlanta and across Georgia. It's great. Delicious floodgates. There you go. Back 40 Beer Company is opening a brewery and restaurant in Birmingham in 2018. The location is just across the street from where their very first sample was ever poured at Magic City Brew Fest. I believe that development or that area is called Sloss Furnaces. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the uh, first satellite location for the Gadsden-based company. They're converting a 6,230-square-foot warehouse into this space. Sounds pretty impressive when it's complete, probably sometime in mid-2018. They will produce... 2,000 barrels a year. They'll have the full-service restaurant, beer garden, live performance stage, two decks, indoor and outdoor bars, and plenty of TVs for watching the game. It's going to cost them about $1.3 million, but also uh, create about 30 jobs in the area. So that's cool. Nice. Yeah. Excellent. Good for them. Sweetwater's Last Call Bar and Grill is now open in Atlanta's Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport. It opened last Saturday in Concourse B, replacing the Dos Equis Explorers Lounge. They will be pouring their core beers, like 420 IPA and blue, etc., plus seasonal offerings like Triple Tail. And, of course, they'll have a menu of food items designed to pair well with Sweetwater beers. And, of course, before you leave, you can buy your hats and your shirts and your glassware and all the, the neat swag. So check that out on your next trip in or out of town. You know, you did something there that I almost do every time I mention that, Brian. You called it Last Call Bar and Grill. Oh, what did I say? It's la- La- and it's Last Cast. You last know, with Cast. With Sweetwater and Fishing and all that. Last yes. Cast Bar and Grill. I think I've probably yeah. done that every time I've I looked have at as that. Well. Last yeah. Cast Bar and Grill. Now, where exactly is Did you say that was in Concourse B? Is that Concourse correct? Concourse B, Okay, yeah. good. Okay, very cool. I like that. So this is an interesting one. Brooklyn's lineup brewing company is ordered to stop selling a beer that they brewed inspired by Beyonce. The cease and desist was over a beer named Beyonce. I think I'm saying that right. It was intended to be a compliment to the star, but was not obviously taken that way. It was introduced last year in October and returned this year due to popular demand, and this will be the last run of it, of course. Uh, it's listed as a 5% German Pilsner on, on Untap with an average rating of about 3.86. So I have to wonder if Beyonce really just had a problem with the style. You know, if I were going to brew true. a beer up for Beyonce or inspired by her, I'd go with maybe a Golden Ale or something Imperial. Imperial IPA, Imperial Stout. That's a good point. Or even Imperial Pilsner, you know, because hey, that's a thing. She didn't mind the name. She just didn't care for the beer style. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, but I, but I if you, that. But if you like that, it, Beyonce. you should have put a tap on it. That's what I want to know. The, <laughs> yes, exactly. See, there you go. That was really, that was really terrible, and <laughs> oh, I apologize. That was, you know, I don't know whether to give you... That's, that was good. I'll give you that Thank one. you. So, Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. Well, Brian's always interesting stuff in the news, and we need to take a quick break. We are live at Stats Brew Pub in downtown Atlanta, and we'll be back in just a few moments to talk with their brewmaster, Austin Edwards.
Have you ever thought about owning your own brewery, but don't know what it takes to get one built? We're CRL Contracting, and we build breweries. We are the most experienced contractors in the state of Georgia when it comes to building new breweries and tap rooms or expanding current breweries. If you've been to Orpheus, Second Self, or Scofflaw, then you know what kind of work we can do. Just give us a call at 678-546-3382 or visit crlcontracting.com for more information. CRL Contracting. We build breweries. CRLcontracting.com. Craft beer forged with a reverence for tradition and new styles that start a revolution. Ironmonger Brewing. The brewers at Ironmonger pride themselves in being masters of barrel-aged, hoppy, and sour beers. They invite you to their tap room to taste and see. And coming soon, Ironmonger's Barrel Room featuring live entertainment. Keep up to date on all things Ironmonger by liking them on Facebook. Ironmonger Brewing, establishing a new standard in craft beer. Saren and Tim, the beer guys. If you're like us, no lunch or dinner is complete without a pint or two of craft beer. Which is why Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock and Alpharetta are always on our list. Tim, why do they call it Truck and Tap? Well, the tap part is easy, Aaron. See, they've got 18 of them. As for the truck part, well, that's when it gets interesting. Truck and Tap features your favorite Atlanta area food trucks daily, so that way you're getting a different menu every day. Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and coming soon to Duluth in 2018. Truckandtap.com. Let them know that the beer guys sent you. We are Reformation Brewery, celebrating the reformer in you. Locally crafted within the renowned Etowah watershed of Woodstock, Georgia, Reformation creates yeast-forward brews full of aroma and flavor crafted to last. Come see us in beautiful Woodstock, Georgia, for a tour and tasting of unique brews that you can't find anywhere else. Reformation Brewery, set beer free. ReformationBrewery.com. the beer guys on facebook twitter and instagram the numbers all go to 11 does that mean it's louder well it's one louder isn't it now back to the beer guys radio show and welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. BeerGuysRadio.com is our website. We are live at Stats Brew Pub in downtown Atlanta talking with their brand new brewmaster, Austin Edwards. Austin, thanks so much for joining us on the show today. Appreciate it. You're welcome. It's great to be here. Definitely. So, so we're going to start with, uh, depending on who we ask, this is an easy question or a difficult one, but uh, what got you into craft beer? Uh, so it started, I was uh, working at Tacomac years ago and... Uh, just kind of fell into it through trying to sell it to the customers. Loved the culture behind it and decided then there that I just wanted to get into brewing beer. And now, did you start doing a little bit of a homebrew action and just got the bug or uh, uh, worked in service? That's essentially what happened. My, yep. my parents made the mistake of buying me a, a homebrew kit for my 21st birthday. And nice. that just kind of signed the deal right there. So you, you've been into the game as soon as you were legal to be into it then, correct? Yes. All right. Awesome. As far as we know, maybe before. But, that's right. You know, well, we on the air, he's going to say. Oh, that's true. That's <laughs> true. It was the 21st legal, birthday. It was exactly. actually the 12th birthday that's true. that he got the, the kit there. So <laughs> Perfect. Now, uh, as we've mentioned a few times, we're here at Stats, your brew pub here. Uh, you're the brewmaster here at, in downtown Atlanta. And uh, Stats has been here for a while, but not as a brew pub. So correct. kind of how did that uh, transition happen? What, did, what uh, made Stats decide to be become a brew pub so stats has been around for about 10 years now um we were the first bar in the state that offered the self-serve tap tables um for the 10-year anniversary they decided to kind of spice things up a little bit and figured installing a brewery would be the next big step now, you mentioned the, the tap tables, and that was something I, w- I did want to ask. So we're sitting here. I'm looking down, and people are sitting at these long tables, and everybody's got beer taps in front of them. So what is a tap table, and kind of how does that concept work? So the tap table is essentially a table that people can sit at and serve their own beer. And you get charged by the ounce of beer, and at the end of the meal, you just pay for the volume you've consumed. Now, do you have your house beers flowing through those? Or? We do. Oh, very cool. Now, can you select different beers, or is it just uh, one beer per tap? Or is, I mean, how does that work? Uh, it's just one beer per tap. Okay. That's well, cool. See, each table looks like it has yeah, each a few one's taps. Got little, gotcha. Right? Okay. Yes. So each table has two taps available, and uh, depending on seating availability, you can kind of choose which one you'd like to sit at. So I'm curious, and I don't know if you know this or not, Austin, but do you see... 
Do you know what does consumption look like with those in there? Are people uh, people tend to uh, flow freely there when they're when they're monitoring by the ounce? Are they a little more reserved? Uh, it always depends on the group of people, but I can tell you if it's me and my friends. There would be no limits, probably. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I would think later in the night too would be a little bit more liberal as uh, far as the pours go. Yeah. Oh yeah, and definitely when sports are going on. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, that would bring our true. crew out. It looks like a uh, filling up the gas tank with <laughs> the meter ching, there. Just ching ching ching. ching, ching, ching. Exactly. Can you drink directly from the taps, Ooh. or is that frowned on? Uh, you might meet security that way. <laughs> okay. Are they nice? Is security nice? <laughs> yeah. That's a, if you're gonna, they're coming over to get <laughs> some of that tap back. Exactly. Yeah. I'll share the tap with them. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Now the. So the brew pub, you just installed it recently. Tell us, uh, for the geeky and the brewing set, tell us a little bit about the specifics of the brew house. So our brew house was manufactured by Alpha Brewing Operations. Uh, it's a 10-barrel system, fully automated, steam jacketed. Uh, it's, I mean, I've never seen a more beautiful piece of equipment that's Alpha seems to be really popular right yeah, now. Yeah, they have. Yeah, I've seen a lot of the brew pubs and smaller mm-hmm. breweries are getting the Alpha systems there. Yeah, they're, I, they're I kind of believe hot. that they're the gold standard as far as a 10-barrel setup goes. Yeah. And, and a 10-barrel setup is not bad. I mean, that, that gives you plenty of beer to work on for a while, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. So um, tell us a little bit about, um, again, some of the beers that you've got here. We've got a great flight list here. Uh, we've got six on tap. Uh, Tim and I have already, well, you've already, oh, you've almost finished the Pilsner. I tell so. you what, you know what we do? we got six beers here, yes. so we'll, we're going to do this two at a time as a total flight, Austin. How about that? We'll drink a couple beers and talk about them, then, then we won't. So the one that I'm imagining is probably on the lighter end of the spectrum that most people would start with on the light end is the one that I've had a pint and a half of so far. 300 Pilsner. So tell us yes. about this beer that we're sipping on right now. So this is a pretty traditional German style Pilsner. Um, all the malt is sourced from Germany. Our yeast is German. Uh, we really just wanted to do a nice easy drinking beer that we can, you know, have people enjoy when they come in here to watch games, uh, come in, sit all day on football Sunday. It's a nice selection and very easy on the palate. And what's the ABV on that one? That one is uh, 4.7%. Okay. Well, so you that is definitely a good one. You can sit yes. around and watch the game and have a few of them. Okay. Yeah. And it's clean. You know, you know I always say, and we've, we've heard from brewers before, that uh, you can really figure out how good a brewmaster is by the Pilsner that because there's nothing to hide. And, and this is a really nice, clean offering. This is this is uh, tasty. Yeah. Pilsner, you got, if, you, if you've got any flaws there, they're going to stick out. Definitely. You know, definitely. Good. So, so it's good. I now, from there, Austin, I'm sorry, uh, go right ahead. I was just going to comment. I can't say I was terrified of the beer when I first brewed when it. you first got to it yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah can't throw a lot of hops at that one oh, no. yeah don't don't put that in the yeah. barrel and age it for a little while it's not going to work for you now from 300 pilsner am I going to go uh, Atlanta Brew Night or am I going to go over to Shooter McGavin there I would make the move to Shooter McGavin okay so tell us about Shooter McGavin so the Shooter McGavin is a Belgian style wheat beer uh, so it's got a little bit of the orange peel a little bit of coriander not too much I didn't want to overpower the palate with that but it's a nice easy drinking. Um, very appealing to your typical kind of just into craft beer type drinker. All right. Very tasty, man. Nice. Yeah, that's good. So yeah, so wits are usually a good entry level beers for a lot of folks uh, into the craft world. You know, and it's it's one that's got a little character and a little mm-hmm. flavor that's not you, you know, a lot of people, if you're moving from Budweiser and you get something, you know, 300 Pilsner is going to be one. If you're a Bud drinker, you're going to drink a 300 Pilsner, and you're going to see, you know, a cleaner. Uh, well, not cleaner. I mean, Bud's got to get props. They, they brew a hey, clean listen, beer. Hey, listen, they brew a clean beer, so. and they, they're consistent. Uh, so that's, but a little that more, that. you get a little more of the malt in that. You know, you yes. get a little more of that, uh, that the, the grain flavor of what is in that Pilsner. So, And then, you know, Shooter McGavin, you're getting a little more character. So if you do want to get a little adventurous there and you want some character too yeah. if there's something there there with that so it's very yeah. nice so now the brew house uh, that's going to become uh, an event space and you're going to offer tours in that down there is that correct yes so the plan is as it stands to kind of rent out that space for parties up to i think 12 to 20 people maybe do a uh, you know private beer dinner pairing and then just kind of overlook the brew house um Potentially, I could be there to kind of talk about the equipment, but I think that's the plan for it at the moment. Yeah, and do you get to, when you're down there, if you rent that as a brew space, you get a brew while you're down there. Is that right? 
Uh, Sweet. If you're there early it's, enough. It's <laughs> negotiable. Right. You, you get to just uh, get rid of all the spent grains. You get to kind of do all that yeah, fun yeah, stuff, yeah, right? You, you have the... to show up at 7 in the morning like yes. me. Yeah. And sanitize. That's your that's your new job, exactly. <laughs> now, one thing I thought of when, when I heard Stats was becoming a brew pub, I don't think – I know I don't, and I don't think a lot of people think – Brew pub when they think sports bar, and that's and right. stats is you know a pretty traditional sports bar. You've got you know plenty of TVs in here. You know you can catch the game in that. So uh, w- with that kind of um, how did that how did that come about? And is it something you're trying to get people to think of a brew pub when they come to watch the game? It's definitely a little bit of a rebranding for us. Um, we want to try to attract some locals back down to the area, give them something to look forward to. We see a good bit of uh, tourism traffic, but we think that the brew pub aspect will bring some of the locals back down, something to come back for. Yeah, because this area really is, I mean, it is our tourist area. You know, we've got the Georgia Aquarium over here, Centennial Olympic Park and that, so... Plons of tourists, tons of tourist traffic. Plons of tourist that traffic. That was tricky to say. That is, that is that a lot. Was, that was actually pretty good. But it was yes. a little tricky there. there so. Not even fourth segment yet. Right. No. I know. Starting <laughs> early. But uh, we've got, uh, you know, Max Max Lager's a little down the street. But other than that, there's there's really nothing craft beer in this area no. before you guys came on the scene. Correct? Correct. So. And how's it starting out so far? You guys are, what are you, a month or so in maybe to serving your so, own beers? Actually, just a couple weeks now. Our first week selling beer was right before the SEC championship game and so that happened and we sold through a lot more product than I was expecting so now I'm trying to recuperate from that. <laughs> it's all those Bama fans drinking that beer. It's that's a good uh, problem to have. Exactly, exactly. So excellent. Well, cool. Well, guys, uh, we're going to take a quick break right now. You're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. BeerGuysRadio.com is our website and we'll be back with more from Stats Brewmaster Austin Edwards right after this. Time for the hot list. The beer guys have the scoop on what's going on next week. Brought to you by CRL Contracting. We build breweries. CRLcontracting.com. That's hot. And a lot of great things going on in Georgia this week. On Sunday, we have Okonomiyaki. Yes, we do at sure. Monday Night's Garage and Soba Noodles there. So, uh, you know, I've tried o- Okonomiyaki probably butchering that uh fries yes somewhere and they were interesting but uh n- not my thing i, I, I love it like i'm a personal okay. fan of it but uh, but i know you didn't like the shrimp flakes that kind of moved the bonito flakes yes exactly flakes. so flakes, but yeah. i want to try real okonomiyaki it's to delicious see, to see how this is so it's maybe not. i'll go check it out that is at monday night's garage we also have santa and mrs claus at uh, wild heaven on monday we have the coco bunny launch from creature comforts that is at chops and hops in watkinsville then on Tuesday, the Cocoa Bunny can launch at Creature Comforts uh, there in Athens and Two Wheel Tuesdays at Lean Draft House in Atlanta. On Wednesday is the official opening of the Southbound Tap House at uh, Savannah Airport. So Savannah nice. uh, Hilton Head Airport there is open up their Southbound Tap House. On Thursday, we have Pups and Pints at Wild Heaven. Friday, Lincoln Phil Station in Snellville is going to tap a bunch of Monday Night Garage Series beers. And we have a Southern Holiday Beer Dinner at the Wing Cafe and Tap House in Marietta. Next Saturday, we have Christmas Adams Celebration at Reformation Brewery. We have the Gravitational Wave can release at Wild Heaven. That's the Russian Imperial Stout. It's in cans this year. Oh, wow. Can- so first year they put okay. it in cans. So they're going to do that. And uh, Gel House down in Hampton is going to have Jolly Jam. So that's what's going on this week. For a full list of Georgia beer events, check out BeerGuysRadio.com. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Next Friday is Hawaiian Shirt Day. So, you know, if you want to, go ahead and... uh 
wear a Hawaiian shirt and jeans. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. And welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Come visit us at BeerGuysRadio.com. We are live at Stats Brew Pub Atlanta downtown today. We're talking to Brewmaster Austin Edwards. We're drinking their beers. We're eating snacks. And uh, right now, we're going to go to a Cigar in 60 with field operative Brian Hewitt. Well, in case you guys haven't noticed, it's kind of cold outside, so I've been thinking about stouts and porters and things like that, but also what cigars I'm going to smoke with those. And I wound up going back to an old favorite recently, the Padron Anniversary 1964 Maduro. Uh, It's a really nice smoke. It's uh, it's heavy on the chocolate and the earth and the coffee, and uh, in the one I smoked, it was was pretty big on the caramel. and there was a reason behind that. Actually, the uh, the patriarch of that that cigar house, Padron uh, House, uh, Jose Orlando Padron, had passed recently. So it was a tribute smoke. But it's a really, really good cigar. It's a favorite for a lot of people, and I think it would it would pair well with a lot of the porters and the stouts that are very popular right now when it's cold out. You know, especially like the. Uh, I think it's like the major Horton's export stout. Oh, things yeah. along yeah, that, right. the dry Irish stout, the even yeah. dry Irish stout. Things that are really nice for this weather, but not so over the top. Not the fourteen percent big barrel aged ones. And I think they'll, I think they'll go together so well. The the, uh, the cigar will complement the beer, and vice versa. That would be my recommendation. Go find you a Padron, nineteen sixty four anniversary, Maduro. Yeah, well, th- those get mentioned on. Best of list quite a bit. The, the oh, they've Padron gotten a lot of awards. I yeah. remember back in the day, the anniversary Maduro. I don't remember, uh, what was it, 32, 46? I forget my cigar numbers, Brian. 1964 but, uh, is one awards. There is the, uh, the tw- 1926. There are various anniversaries commemorating different spots in the family's history as they've grown and uh, produced tobacco and, and cigars. So. And for those that go out searching for one, just a heads up, they are not an inexpensive cigar. Yeah, you're looking in the, the mid-teens for, for some of those, but I think the 1964 is a good value for what you get. And you can find them almost everywhere these days, which yeah. is nice. Cool. That was one of the first cigars I uh, smoked after my Swisher Sweet slash Black and Mild oh, days. Yeah. Yeah, was, that was uh, I went to a real cigar store, and the guy was like, you need to try this. And that was that you Maduro know, 64 is good, yeah. Grow, growing up, I, I say that younger in my earlier days, but you have Optimos and Swishers and those those gas yep. station cigars, and they turn me off from cigars because it's night and day oh, yeah. between a good premium cigar and what you get for a buck twenty nine. It's a, a big, station. big step up. Yeah, big huge step difference. Up. Definitely. So, so speaking I, of step ups, yes. by the way, this is our transition, by the We're way. We're stepping up transition. Yeah, we're transitioning and stepping up to some craft beer. We are. With Stats and Austin Edwards, the brand new brewmaster, about two weeks old, Stats Brew Pub has uh, started getting their own craft beer. Youngins. Is that right? They've Youngins. been around for a while. They've been around for almost a decade, and uh, but now they're starting to get into the craft beer game, which is awesome. So, Austin, uh, we started or we finished the segment talking about uh, some of your beers. Let's go ahead and get a couple of more in the pike. Uh, what's uh, what should we try next? Where are we going next, Austin? Yeah. My suggestion would be the uh, Southpaw Saison. All right. And now, what is, is this? This is Saison in the French or Belgian tradition. Uh, it's a little bit more French. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. And Southpaw, you can I only drink this with my left hand? Can I only do that? You should. Southpaw, yeah, let okay. me switch up. Let me switch there you go. up. <laughs> I can do the same oh, thing yes. here. Exactly. We'll be all set. So, so yeah, tell us a little, bit, a little bit more about this one, Austin. So this is on one of our rotating taps. Uh, it's just going to be a seasonal beer. I was looking for something kind of go out the gates to start out with. It's a little bit different from everything else. So figured... You know, Saison yeast has always been one of my favorites. I, I've always enjoyed Saison beers, so figured uh, go ahead and start out with this. Good. And it's a now clean drinking beer, too, yeah. I get a little bit more hoppiness in it a lot of Saisons. There's a yes. little more bitterness in this one. There's a little bit more bitterness. Um, com- it's about 30 IBUs. Okay. I wanted to give it a little bit more kick uh, just to appeal to the average beer crowd. Very cool. Nice, man. Yeah. Now, uh, Austin, uh, we talked to a lot of brew pubs, of course, uh, and uh, they like to always work a, l- a lot with food. So do you work with the executive chef here to kind of see which beers work best with his foods? Yes. Uh, I t- I've talked to Chef Matt a lot, and, um, you know, with the rebranding into a brew pub, we actually revamped our menu. Uh, we've, you know changed into some higher quality ingredients we've brought in some new vendors 
Uh, one of the cool things that we do have is uh, our beef supplier, Stone Mountain Cattle, they actually come and pick up some of the spent grain and they actually feed that to the cattle. And then in return, we get the beef and make burgers out of it. It's the circle of life. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> there you go. That's, you know, it's a lot. It's very cool. Our show last week, we had uh, we had uh, Healthy Bark on. Yeah. They take spent grain. We should introduce you to them, Austin. So Okay. They yeah. take spent grain and they make dog treats out of it. And so, awesome. they're, you know, I know that that's been. If they uh, give enough for to, my dog, then we can make a deal. Yeah, there you, you go. Something <laughs> that's happen, it. That's right? it. Yeah, absolutely. Now, a question here is we're drinking through these. I'm looking. Pilsner that we've had, we've had the wit, we're going to the Saison, there's a Pale Ale, there's an IPA, and I think we've got an Amber over there, is that Correct. right? So, now, all of these styles are what I would consider standards. Yes. You know, pretty standard beers. Um, and being that this is a sports bar, was that intentional due to the clientele you expected here? It's extremely intentional. Um, I didn't want to scare away the folks that would normally come in here to come and watch games on the weekend, so... Uh, that was a little bit of the challenge with developing our beer menu is that, you know, we have to appeal to everyone, craft yeah. beer drinkers, macro drinkers. Um, and so that's that was one of the challenges going into it. But it was certainly a fun challenge to take on. Yeah, and it's one of those things where it's like you know, may not necessarily have one of those big old bourbon barrel aged stouts or some wild ales and things like that. You just need to have good drinking beers because right. it's a sports pub. I mean, you're going to sit here two or three hours, watch the game, have a couple of beers with your buds. You know, you're right down here from Mercedes Benz Stadium, Phillips Arena. Maybe you're here before or after the game. So it's not something that you really want to. You know, do and, and, and get get crazy with that. Exactly, you speak for, lack of a for yourself, Aaron. Oh, listen, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, mean, you know, you can I don't go know for how it, you do a game, but oh, so. <laughs> well, well, for Tim, we will have rotating taps, so okay, you might, you might see some ask. of those high gravity options okay, there okay. occasionally. That was going to be my next question. You know, if there was, I, I know you mentioned the saison was on a rotating tap. Uh, will there be seasonals? Uh, you know, rotating beers. Uh, any any plans to do something? for lack of a better term, geekier to kind of get the beer geek crowd in? The ideas have been flowing through my head. Um, right now, I'm more focused on dialing in the equipment that way I can develop a more consistent product. Uh, so right now, I'm really focused on the beers that we're working on with now. Yeah, okay. and that's the thing, really, too, because you've got brand new equipment. You guys are brand new. You just want to basically figure out how it works before you really start to get to get crazy with stuff, right? Definitely, yeah. quality yeah. first is a good policy. Yes, absolutely. A lot of folks don't do that. <laughs> just yeah. jump in and go, right? So <laughs> let's just start with barley wines. We'll go crazy. That's it. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Okay, Austin. Next up, we've got, and I think I see a little reference in the name here. Maybe we have Atlanta Brew Nighted Pale yes. Ale. Yes. So tell us a little oh, bit. Oh, I skipped ahead. I'm sorry. I gotta, gotta go back here. Okay, good. What are you go. doing, Aaron? I'm sorry, man. I went the That's, amber first. I, but I'm going go. in the right order here, right? Is, or is who's right? Me well, or Aaron? This is important. I personally I would go with the amber ale. There you oh. go. Oh. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. We're gonna go with the amber there then. You go. Yes, and it's a red zone amber ale, hence the name. Because there is a big old football stadium right down the street from us, so uh, very important to have, right? Yes, and as people might be noticing, all of our names are have a bit of a sports influence to them. Yes, I noticed that. Yes, that's I good. Did see that. So, well, being a sports bar and being here, like, in a, like I said, I mean, you know, for big sports games, uh, sports games uh, here in, in Atlanta, that was terrible. <laughs> their sports are really <laughs> hard out here. Sports yeah. and great out here. Exactly. I really am a football fan. Um, but uh, you know, I mean, we, like you said, we had the SEC championship game the other day with uh, with Georgia and, and uh, Auburn. We, you know, we, you get big games like this. The Falcons, of course. Um, this seems like a really good place for a lot of folks who are coming in from out of town to go ahead and check out. It's almost like the first kind of part of Atlanta that they see. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, if I were going to a big event like that and I saw a brew pub while walking from the parking deck, I would I would definitely stop in myself. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I see a brew pub and I haven't been to it. I'd have to check it out, no doubt. Absolutely. So. Well, Austin, we're going to come back and uh, talk a little bit more about your beers and your brew pub. You're listening to Beer Guys Radio. Follow us on the socials, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Beer Guys Radio. And we'll be back in just a moment.
Have you ever thought about owning your own brewery, but don't know what it takes to get one built? We're CRL Contracting, and we build breweries. We are the most experienced contractors in the state of Georgia when it comes to building new breweries and tap rooms or expanding current breweries. If you've been to Orpheus, Second Self, or Scofflaw, then you know what kind of work we can do. Just give us a call at 678-546-3382 or visit crlcontracting.com for more information. CRL Contracting. We build breweries. CRLcontracting.com. Craft beer forged with a reverence for tradition and new styles that start a revolution. Ironmonger Brewing. The brewers at Ironmonger pride themselves in being masters of barrel-aged, hoppy, and sour beers. They invite you to their tap room to taste and see. And coming soon, Ironmonger's Barrel Room featuring live entertainment. Keep up to date on all things Ironmonger by liking them on Facebook. Ironmonger Brewing, establishing a new standard in craft beer. Darren and Tim, the beer guys. If you're like us, no lunch or dinner is complete without a pint or two of craft beer. Which is why Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock and Alpharetta are always on our list. Tim, why do they call it Truck and Tap? Well, the tap part is easy, Aaron. See, they've got 18 of them. As for the truck part, well, that's when it gets interesting. Truck and Tap features your favorite Atlanta area food trucks daily, so that way you're getting a different menu every day. Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and coming soon to Duluth in 2018. Truckandtap.com. Let them know that the beer guys sent you. We are Reformation Brewery, celebrating the reformer in you. Locally crafted within the renowned Etowah watershed of Woodstock, Georgia, Reformation creates yeast-forward brews full of aroma and flavor crafted to last. Come see us in beautiful Woodstock, Georgia for a tour and tasting of unique brews that you can't find anywhere else. Reformation Brewery, set beer free. ReformationBrewery.com. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Back off, man. I'm a scientist. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. And welcome back to Beer Guys Radio. BeerGuysRadio.com is our website. Fourth segment already, Tim. That is fourth craziness. segment. Um, I think we're in fairly good shape for the fourth segment. No, I think actually. we are too, actually. So it's a, it's a testament to Stats Brew Pub here. We're talking with about the it. Brewmaster Austin Edwards. I've been eating some of their really spicy boiled. Uh, boiled uh, chili lime, chili lime, boiled, boiled peanuts, peanuts. And, uh, and enjoying that. But uh, you've got some, you've got some uh, interesting you know questions. I, for I, Austin, I, so, so I just want to say here. So we just drank the uh, the red zone, the amber ale. I think amber ales are uh, are wholly unappreciated. Agreed. My personal opinion. You know, you get to, you get the maltiness, you get some hoppiness there. It's uh, it's something uh, not a lot of people strive to make a really great one. And I guess it's just a style that, you know, people go other directions. But I think a really good solid amber ale is underappreciated. And, and I wonder if it's like the Sam Adams effect. Because I think the Sam Adams yeah. Boston Lager, it's, it's, it's something that it's very similar to this. That a lot of folks kind of, it's their first kind of introduction to craft beer. Maybe they just right. overlook it. I don't know. Nobody knows. It's a mystery to this day. It is a mystery, yes. So, okay. Now, see? See? I'm following the sheet here. And we went to the amber ale. Yes. But next in line, if we continue the counterclockwise rotation, is going to be an IPA. But then we go to a Pale L, and that's just that insanity. doesn't make sense. Yeah, that's crazy. So do we jump over to Brunited here? So this is actually where the debate starts. Okay. The, the geography of the sheet really doesn't mean anything. It's just coincidence. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Well, then I am going for a Brunited because yes, I think I'm uh, a little bit more that would be the places the, to I'm go. So. Brunited. So a little shout out to our MLS team here. Yes. Right? Yes. A little proof. So so each is okay. each beer named for the sport that it would pair the best with? No. No? <laughs> so if, if I come in here to watch an Atlanta United game, uh, I don't have to just drink Brunei then. No, you can drink whatever you want. Okay. As long what as if, it's I like uh, I like fireball cinnamon whiskey. Can I drink that? Uh, don't give him fireball, please beer. don't. Okay. <laughs> so if you please must. don't give Tim fireball. It's not so. a good thing. Yes. Okay, no. so tell us uh, Atlanta Brunited Pale Ale. Tell us about this beer, Austin. So this was uh, something we decided to do. It's a little bit of a hybrid, uh, given that we have both Terrapin and Sweetwater being the big main horses in this race of Georgia. It's kind of, you know, a hybrid between the Terrapin Rye and 420. So you get a little bit more hop presence than you would in a traditional Pale Ale. But uh, we just kind of wanted to live up to that standard. Bushwood IPA. So Gambling is illegal at Bushwood, sir. So I, I see, never slice. Uh, I see there's a slight haze here. 
There is. So that that's it. And uh, so tell us about this. We've got East Coast West Coast battles with beer, just like in rap. And as we proved <laughs> on break, Aaron and I are are rappers. Oh, we're we're fantastic. So yeah, yes, it. we were dropping a little sir mix a lot here. Uh, so what's the style of this one? Tell us about this beer. So, I've. I've deemed it an East Coast style IPA. It's influenced by New England, but it's not true New England style. So heavy on the late edition hops, um, a little bit lighter in the wheat and oat profile, but you're going to get a lot more of the flavor and aromas out of the hops, a little less on the bitterness than you would on a West Coast IPA. Uh, for me, this stu- this beer in particular is a extremely drinkable IPA. It only finishes out at about uh, 52 IBUs, so it's not going to be an assault on your palate. Okay, yeah. Yeah, not too brutal there. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, it's, it's interesting because a lot of southern breweries are doing this type of hybrid where it's a little bit of a bite to it, but it's not necessarily a big juice bomb as well, but there's kind of a middle of it. You know, I mean, Jekyll and, of course, you have to mention Monday Night, um, you know, even even places like Sweetwater have done kind of like this this type of thing where it's a little bit of haze, you've got a little bit of that floral and that, that tropical fruit, but you've also got a little bit of that hot bite, too, that you get into, into an IPA as the well. The southeastern IPA. There you go. I like that. It's going to work. Okay, I'm going to put uh, Aaron and Brian on the spot Uh-oh. here. Top three. Top three. What you know were what? your three favorites today? Uh, I am not a Pilsner guy, but I really okay. enjoyed this 300 right. Pilsner. There you uh, go. I really enjoyed that one. Um, I think the uh, this IPA is very drinkable as well. And I'm going to give a shout-out to that uh, Atlanta Brew United Pale Ale as well, too. Okay. Those are my top three. Well, I'm sorry. What was your number two? Oh, my yeah. number two was the, was the IPA here. The IPA. The IPA. I yeah. should have known that, right? Yes. Brian, top three. Oh, man. Uh, I, think, I think it would be uh, the Bushwood... IPA being the first, I think the uh, the Atlanta Brunited Pale Ale, and I'm gonna surprise you, Shooter McGavin Wit. That's you know the Wit's tasty, just, absolutely. I really like that. Yeah. It is. I'm gonna go, and this is in no particular order, just the top three. The 300 Pilsner, man. I, I like you, Aaron. I can really enjoy a nice Pilsner. I could drink the heck so out of that I beer. Drink yeah. That. So I'm gonna slide on up into the red zone there. Uh, I really enjoy that. As I said, uh, I really appreciate a good Amber Ale, and I myself don't hunt them down. Yeah. So, but I enjoy that. And then uh, Atlanta Brunited, the yeah. Pale, man. So excellent, man. No surprise that you and Brian picked the IPA and. But no, you know, but, but seriously, I enjoyed though. them uh, all are tasty, but those those are going to take it. What's your favorite, Austin? It's hard for me to pick a favorite. It's like your your children, child, there. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I will say, every time I drink the three hundred, I'm honestly impressed. I've I've had very minimal experience prior to this to bring loggers, so the three hundred was truly a test of my own skill, and I'm constantly impressed by it. Very cool, man. It's always nice to stretch your own skills, you know, Yes. to do that. And that's Brian and I back when we homebrewed back in the day. So it so was long ago fun to, to sit down and try a new style that we'd never done. Uh, we made some really crappy beer in the process. Also. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, we made some lousy beer. But the, the joy of that comes when you, na- when you do nail it, when you finally get what you're going for there. It's uh, very satisfying. So, Austin, i got to ask. I mean, you know, you've, you said that you've kind of uh, worked in homebrewing. You kind of did a little bit around the edges. Is this your dream job? Is it not everyone's dream job? True that. Yeah. <laughs> I, no, no. no I, okay. I talk. Well, it's not my job, my full job, but, I mean, if I could do this full time, I mean, it's a lot less physically demanding than shoveling grain. So. Yeah. What That's if, true. What if, if I could make, if I could become a millionaire uh, talking and drinking beer from different people all the time, I think that's, that's, that's the real dream job. Yes. That is the dream. That. Yes, not yeah, a bad. I, I can set. agree yeah. with that. But yeah. brewing's good. Brewing's good. No, but I mean, you know, you kind of really, kind of really can unleash your creative energies on this, sure. and uh, you know, and just have a really nice, uh, nice, some nice liquid that people enjoy and drinking, and uh, you know, it, it, it's got to be kind of a nice feeling to kind of see people enjoying what uh, what you've worked so hard to, to to make. It definitely is. Yeah, so that's cool. I'm watching so, curling, by the way, on on TV. Curling, I'm very excited about every this. Every sport up here, man. This so. is the greatest sport in the world. Yes. So, Austin, I'll tell you what, man. A little, uh, little info here kind of wrap things up. We, You guys are in what's called Restaurant Row here. So. Yes. And your parent company is Legacy Ventures. There's, there's what is it, four total restaurants here? You have Stats, Der Beer Garden, Twin Smokers, and is it Max's? Yes, Max's Pizza. Pizza. So with the, the common ownership, are these, are these ran in a way that your beer can be served at every restaurant? Uh, yes. So 
currently our beer is being served not only at Stats, but also at Max's Coal Oven Pizza and Twin Smokers Barbecue. Okay. Uh, right. Not at Der Beer Garden because we want to try to keep that as German, German as possible. Right. Will you do German beers in the future for Der Beer Garden? Uh, I keep on telling them that my Pilsner will be good enough to be over there. Okay. There you go. There, there you go. go. I like all that. Right. Yes, exactly. Get a, get a little Hellas out there for next year, next Oktoberfest, too. You'll be all yes. set. That's right. Excellent. Well, cool. Um, you know, and... and um, that's great to know, and to, and it's kind of nice to kind of get this craft beer kind of vibe going down here in an area where you don't necessarily expect it as a local. Um, you know, it kind of this is kind of a tourist area. A, a lot of folks, you know, I'm an I'm an outside the perimeter kind of guy. It's not necessarily some place I'm going to go to uh, to to go other than to go to a game. So it's nice to kind of see this little area revive itself and say, you know what, I want to go to Stats. I'm going to go hang out and get, get a craft beer. Watch a uh, watch curling on and, you know, TV. When for you example. have yeah. family come in, where does family want to go if they haven't been yeah. before? Yeah, they want to the go Aquarium Centennial Park, Water, World of Coca Cola, and uh, you know before again, Max Lagers is not that far, so there was that mm-hmm. choice. But you have you know another option here, which is nice that you don't just have to drink forty two dollar. Uh, whatever's are available at the aquarium. Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. Cool. Well, Austin Edwards, thank you so much for joining us today on the Beer Guys Radio Show. We appreciate it. You're welcome. It's great joining you guys. All right. Awesome. So, Austin, where, if people want to know more about what is going on with Stats Atlanta Brew Pub, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, I would definitely recommend following us on uh, social media, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, that's probably going to be the most immediate access to our information. Awesome. Thank you so much, Austin. You're welcome. All right. It's time for a giveaway to giveaway. What do we got, Tim? Uh, we've got, you know, we've got swag. We do have some swag. swag. And beer goodies to give away. We do. So, and our winner this week is Joel Glagowski. And Aaron, uh, for those that want to get in on the fun, how do they do that? Super easy. Just head to BeerGuysRadio.com. Sign up for our newsletter, and you will be entered to win uh, our weekly swag pack as Tim's phone drops here next to beer. But I hate when that Sorry. happens. I hate when that happens. Anyway, yeah, so uh, we get a weekly email of all the cool stuff that is going on in Georgia Beer. Coming up next week, well, we're going to celebrate the Christmas holiday. We're going to take a week off. But don't worry. We'll have some great interviews from the past year. Check us out, BeerGuysRadio.com. And, of course, we'll be on the social. If you want craft beer info, more craft beer info, check out our podcast, Drink This Beer, because this week we're talking to Charlotte's No Da Brewing. Have a great week. Have a great holiday season. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Cheers. Cheers.